Pastor Taz here at House of El Shaddai. We at the House of El Shaddai believe that everyone deserves to hear a word from the Lord Almighty Creator, El Shaddai, God Almighty. Amen. 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 Jumping right into it, I wanted to encourage you to those uh, to shout out to a young lady of mine from the church and from the ministry. Powerful, powerful woman of God. Thank you uh, for giving me a word. She says that God is speaking to her in this season about being still. And so uh, I believe he's speaking to a lot of people about being still. Some of us, we get, um, we probably get, get beside ourselves. Uh, sometimes we get, excuse me, in a hurry. Sometimes we get discombobulated about things and we, 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 we put too many things on our plate, which means we, we get, get too involved in too many things at once. Uh, trying to make uh, decisions, important decisions, whether it's from business, life, or, or, or you know, uh, uh, family, whatever it may be. You know, the holidays are coming up. So sometimes you have to be still. Sometimes you have to be still. And I'm going to talk about being still in, in, in a manner that we probably didn't think about coming from a famous scripture. But I've done the, I've done the benefit uh, for you of basically dissecting the words and know exactly what God is saying. Amen. And so just listen to the words and I am going to break down the Hebrew definition of some of these words that I pointed out that we use. Some of us say these um uh, mention this scripture in our prayers. And even though it's a good prayer, it's a good uh, uh, scripture to mention in your prayers, you need to understand what you're saying. Amen. Understand what the word of God is saying. So turn me in your Bibles to Psalms Psalms 46, 7 through 11. And, of course, the title is Be Still. Be Still. Psalms 46, verse 7 through 11. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Verse 11, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. And let the church say amen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, uh, man, it's so powerful. We all say be still and know that I am God, but there's a lot that I need you to understand, a lot I need you to notice when you're being still. Amen. Um, and I'll get into that in a moment. But let's walk this thing out. Let's put our leash on and allow the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost to walk us out through these scriptures. Um, the Lord of hosts is with us. How I many know God is with you? Very simple and plain, but think about it. We've all had our times and our endeavors where we felt like we were alone. Amen? Some of you right now may be listening. You feel like you're alone because you haven't heard from God. Thank you. Or you haven't saw him wonderful being lately his spirit lately but how many of you know he has not left you he has not forsaken you he's still there he was there yesterday he's going to be there today guess what i guarantee you he's going to be there forever that's the god that we serve so the son that david is saying the lord of hosts is with us he is he's with us I like the word host. I didn't get the Greek and Hebrew, but I'm looking at it from a perspective. Um, when you come into my home, you're my guest, and it makes me what? The host. Most somebody. God created this entire beautiful earth. And, 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 and guess what? He made it for us. So we're the guest in this earth. And he's the host. Oh, my God. Saints, quit allowing the devil to be your host. <laughs> hey, glory. <laughs> Jesus. Think about that. What is a good word in itself? Stop allowing the enemy to be your host. The devil has no business 
giving you water, feeding you popcorn, allowing you to watch a movie. Listen, God is the host. And you're the guest. And as a guest, the host has given you free reign of all the earth. He says, I made the earth for you, not you for the earth. So as the host says, all things are possible to him that believe. The host says that if you bind it on earth, I'll bind it in heaven. If you loosen on earth, I'll loosen it in heaven. See how much, see the host is the only one that has the authorization to give you power. Come on somebody. So God as our host, he's with us and he's giving you a mandate to be fruitful and multiply. Speak those things as not as though they were. Call those things as not as though they're supposed to be. But Jesus said, if you don't see it, if it, if it does not line up with heaven, well, you need to speak it right. So it'll be just like heaven. Come on, somebody. Henceforth, I got heaven here on earth. That's our goal, saints. I'm not trying to listen. I yeah, glory be to God when I go to heaven. I get to heaven. Thank you, Jesus. But I'm not trying to be there in a hurry. I'm not, I cannot lie and say I don't enjoy my time here on earth. Because guess what? I got heaven here on earth. Amen. I got joy. I got peace. All because I heavenly father. And he died on the cross for you and me. Hmm. Then the Bible says, the God of Jacob is our refuge. Now, let me, I like that right there. Um, I, I got a good one for you, brother CJ. That word refuge, I, I looked at that. That word refuge. That refuge means a loan. Anything concerning the debt. A loan. Think about that. It says that God is is our refuge. So what God says that the God is our loan, which is your life. Mm. Think about it. that's what your life is. You're here for a moment, and then you're going to be with Him. Come on, somebody. God says you're here on a loan that I've created. Hey, glory. Once again, quit allowing the devil, the enemy, to take control of your loan. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. Let me break it like this. Say, if I owe Brother CJ, if I owed him, right, $50, because he loaned it to me, guess what? I'm going to spend the 50 And so the loan is, it, it, the 50 is gone, but the loan still exists because he's waiting on his money back. So here's the thing, even though I haven't given his money back and I spent the money, the loan exists. So it's safe to say there's a loan between Brother CJ and myself. Now, Brother CJ got a loan with me. What if Brother CJ gave that loan to somebody else and says, well, Pastor, you don't own, you don't owe me now. You owe this other person because they bought your loan. Come on, somebody. Listen carefully. God didn't sell your loan to the devil. Yeah. Yeah. My God. God says, it still belongs to me. Come on, somebody. Quit, 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 quit thinking that the enemy uh, 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 has, has, has authority over your life. He doesn't. Yeah, that's your loan. Listen to what he says. He says, the God of Jacob is our refuge. The God of Jacob, he's our loan. The same God. The same God that created us, same God that broke breathed, breathed life into you, same God that sent his only begotten son for your life. God says, I'm still the host. I'm still the provider of it. I'm still the sole priority of it. That's the reason the Bible says, I'm the Alpha, the Mega, the beginning, the end, the author and the finisher of your faith. Guess what? In a nutshell, you still belong to God. Come on, somebody. Amen. No matter what mindset you're in, I don't care how depressed you are. I don't care how uh, 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 how many uh, uh, dysfunctions you got going in your life. I don't care if you're dealing with bipolarism. I don't care if you're dealing with, with, with transvest, uh, 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 transgenderism. I don't care if you're dealing with same sex and, 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 and homosexuality. I don't care if you're dealing with drugs or alcohol. No matter how messed up people may think you are, guess what? You still belong to God. Thank you, Jesus. So the devil, he can't buy your loan. Uh-uh. He can't, he can't borrow your loan. No, no. He has no authority over your life. That's the reason the Bible tells us that God 
of Jacob is with us. So you still belong to him. Amen? Amen. Listen, let's go further. It says, verse 8, come. Okay? Now you recognize who God is. What he is over your life. That he still exists. He's, he's still ahead of your life. He's still the, 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 the uh, um, what he say? He got the whole world in his hand. <laughs> he's still that God. Listen carefully. Come, behold the works of the Lord. Come on, somebody. What helps grow your faith, and I preach this all the time, whenever you get into a bind, whenever you doubt God, whenever you get into a situation, remember what he's done. Amen. He's still the same God. You may not hear him, but he, he brought you out the first time, didn't he? He'll bring you out again. He paid the bill the first time, didn't he? <laughs> He'll pay it again. He made a way the first time, didn't he? He'll make a way again. You may not see him or hear him, but he's still the same God, and he's never left you. Amen? So it says, come, behold the works. And you know, everybody got a testimony. Yours, yours may not be as great as mine. Mine may not be as great as yours, but guess what? We still have identified some miraculous things that God has done for us or someone else. So the Bible says, come and behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he has made on the earth. And they're like, hmm, desolations. That's a big word. Well, see, do you know what that means? No, I don't. I didn't either. <laughs> I don't even know what it means in the English, but we're going to talk about it. Amen. Okay? But it says, it says, what desolations he has made in the earth. Well, that word desolation in, in the Hebrew, it means ruin, astonishment, waste, wonderful. So they're kind of contradicting one another, depending on what you're talking about. Now, we're not talking about astonishment. You know, we're not talking about wonderful. We're talking about ruin. It says, behold his works. What desolation, because you got to understand what he's talking about in the next scripture, in the next passage. He says, what desolation he made in the earth, what ruins he's made in the earth. Look at the works. No matter what you try to do god will make sure that he that the, that you're going to glorify the world or what's in the world over him it's not going to happen and let's go to a uh, secret in your personal life whatever you put before god it'll be destroyed on somebody whatever you put before god he'll ruin it. because nothing goes before him amen, amen? nothing goes before him we got to get to a point, saints, where Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things shall be added unto you. You got to continue to put God first, saints. I know it's difficult. I know it's hard. You may think, oh, yes, easy. No, it's not. I know mothers out there right now, they put their children before God. My Lord. I know men out there right now put their jobs before God. Excuse me, their careers before God. Oh, Lord, I'm a pastor, so I know people that put their pastors before God. I'm serious. Put the first ladies before God. The, the, the pastors why? Quit putting people and things on pedestals. Amen. And start uplifting and glorifying God. And make, make up your mind, nothing comes before your Heavenly Father. Amen? Because if it does, He will make a ruin of it. <laughs> it, become, it will become waste. That's when I look at everything around me. I can adore it. I, I like it. It looks good. But compared to my Heavenly Father, it's waste. Amen. That's all it is. Done. So, this is verse 9. That's how you know it means ruin away. It says, He maketh wars to cease until the end of the earth. <laughs> that's why, saints, I love it. Thank you, Holy Ghost. But see, that's the reason we don't get all messed up when they talking about we're going to go to war. You know, the only time a war will happen if God allows it, preach pastor. So if if we went to war today, it's because God allowed us to go to war. And so God has his own reasons for us to be at war. Amen. And so if it's God involved and God could uh, ordain and orchestrated, that means I'm a child of God. What do I have to worry about? 
Hallelujah. Because guess what? He's my what? Host. Ooh, go pastor. Yes. He's my refuge. He's the priority of my loan, my life. Come on, somebody. So the devil can't have me. The devil can't take me. Man can't have me. Man can't take me. Amen. Amen. So I don't care what kind of war that goes on in the world. If you're a child of God and you got a relationship with our Heavenly Father, guess what? You have nothing to worry about. Come on, somebody. It's it, 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 you, you belong to him. So he says that I'm the one that 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 make up the war seats. I don't care how many presidents out there. I don't care what they try to do. I don't care how many missiles Russia launch and 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 and, and Asia and Vietnam launch. I don't care how many missiles and nu nuclear bombs go forward. If God says no, guess what? Know it what it is. We can try to argue all day long. It's not going to happen. And then he says that I love this. He breaketh the boat. Stop right there. The, he breaketh the boat. I like that. That word bow, y'all, it means sense of bending a bow for shooting arrows. You remember what's the what's the passage for the CJ where it talks about fiery darts being thrown at you? Mm. You know the animal, I mean, you know the, the, the enemy has has bows coming at you, arrows. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine being shot at with arrows with the bow? Well, God says that 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 every bow that the enemy has for your life, God said, I'm gonna break. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank oh, you, Lord. Father. Let me tell you something. You can when a gun breaks on you, you can almost use it <laughs> for a weapon. Still use it for a weapon. But when a bow and arrow break on you, it's worthless. Pretty fast. When you got a bow that shoots bow that shoots arrow, you break it. It is worthless. You can't even make a slingshot out that bad boy. So God says, whatever arrow, that means whatever assignment that the enemy has for your life god says i'm gonna break it amen glory be to god that's Thank the god who we serve and he says that he cut up the spear in sunder i love that i like that listen to the wordplay he cut it the spear in sunder when you think of spear you got to think of our ancestors in africa when they used to you know have the tribes and they carry spears even in even in the biblical days the sheep herd they had spears and some people, just like any other weapon of, of, of choice, uh, uh, some people were deadly with the spear in their hand. You know, you can do it. You can kill a bear with a spear. You can do a lot of things with the spear. So what the Bible is telling you is that you know that, that, the, the, that the enemy has a spear for you. And it's not friendly. <laughs> it's not there to scratch your back. Mm -mm. It's there to kill you, steal, and destroy. But God says, for every spear... That the devil has your life, I'm going to cut it. And I'm not just going to cut it in the hand. Come on, somebody. That word, that, 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 that word spear, it means a lance or a thrust, like a pitching of a tent, javelin, a spear. So that's when let you let you know what you know what a javelin is. Oh my god. And then the pitching of a tent, you know, those things, those, those big nails that goes into the ground. It's, it's in the Bible days where a woman killed the king with that, <laughs> with, the, with that, with that, that, that tent spear, put it through his head. You remember that story? Yeah, that's how deadly the spear is, and that's what the enemy has in your life. He got spears lined up. Are you? Are, 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 are you about to get a new job? Mm. Are you happily married? Mm. Oh, you really love your kids, don't you? Let me let me give them COVID. Come on, somebody. Okay, let me, okay, let me, uh, you've been driving real good. Let me throw an accident up on you. That's that spirit. They're coming at you. But as they come at you, God said, you will not be harmed because I will intervene and I will cut it. Now, the word sunder, that lets you know the magnitude that the way God's going to cut it, it means simple split apart. Mm, my God. So God said, not, not only am I going to cut it in half, because guess what? If you cut a spear in half, it's still a spear. Come on, somebody. So God says, I'm not just going to cut it in half. 
I'm going to split it down the middle. Mm, my God. So how many of you know that, that, that at this point, if you cut a spear down the middle, what it does, it weakens the spear. It's not a spear anymore. Guess what? Now it's just a stick. <laughs> Glory. So God says, I'm going to turn that deadly weapon into a puny stick. Hallelujah. My God. God says, I'm going to turn your major problem into an itty bitty problem. <laughs> Glory. Amen. Thank you, Father. God says, I'm going to turn I'm going to turn that situation, that big situation, into a little situation. He says, that's what I'm going to do for you. And you got to understand, you got to allow God to do that. And then it says, I like this, he burneth the chariot in the fire. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Guess what? You remember, I, I, when I think about chariots, I think about um, I think about uh, uh, Moses and the Red Sea when God parted the Red Sea. You remember uh, uh, King Pharaoh, uh, Pharaoh was coming after him with chariots, but God swallowed them up. Amen. And you know you gotta understand the art of war. If you if if, you, if your enemy had a chariot, that means they were more advanced than the opponents. Most somebody. So God says that even though your enemy may seem like they got the upper hand, hey, Lord, God says that I'll consume them with fire. My God, this how I burn them up. Does anybody hear me today? Oh, my God. Listen carefully. The next, which I wrap this thing up. Be still and know that I am God. And he says that I will be exalted among the heathen and I will, I will be exalted in the earth. This is what he says. Be still. I said, man, okay, you know, when you say be still, you think, no, that's not God was saying. I told you. And like the woman, like, like God told, 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 told the woman of God, she said that God put in a season of being still. That word still in the Greek or in the Hebrew, it means to slacken. In many applications, it means to abate, cease, consume, faint, Feeble, leave, I like this word, let alone the most somebody, or be slothful. Okay? Now, to slacken and be slothful, you can say the same thing. That's basically, God says, I didn't tell you not to move. I just told you to back off some. Mm. That thing that God, that God wants you to do, he didn't say stop or stop doing it or stop doing this. He said just back off some. Come on, somebody. He said, just slack up some. That loved one that you're trying to minister to, slack up some. I know somebody. The thing that you're worried about, I know time is winding down. God said, slack up some. Be still. Sometimes we try to help God too much. <laughs> My God. God said, I didn't tell you. You can, you can do a little bit, but he says, slack up some. In other words, God says, you can do all what you can do, but let me do the rest. That's I'll handle the rest. So just, just slack up some. And then the other one, be still, it says let alone. Oh, Lord, I like that one. I like that one. Let me tell you something. When you pray to God concerning your situation, you have to learn to let it alone. So when you pray, in this season, God said, you got to be still. You got to let it alone. Mm -hmm. Let it alone. That means leave it alone. Cease. Don't put your prayers back on it. Don't put your hands back on it. Don't put your mind back on it. Don't put your thought back on it. Leave it alone, which means leave it to God. Come on, somebody. I'm talking to that person in the season right now. God say, leave it alone. Did you or did you not put it in his hands? But well, you're going to have to learn to be still and leave it in God's hands. Amen. He got it. Trust me. And then to those that, you know, he said, you can do a little bit, but slack up some. God says, I'm the God that saves. I'm the Alpha and the You can do what you can, but God said, I'll do what I will. And it's in this word and it shall be done. Amen. Amen. Bite heads as I pray for you. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord.
Lord, I thank you for this time, this opportunity to preach and teach to your loved ones, your, your, your students, your, 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 your people, Father, your children. I pray right now that you give them the spirit to step, be still and know that you are God. Lord, we want to see you work. We want to see your work manifested, not only on this earth, as you said in your word, but in our lives, Father, in our personal situation, in our finances, in our relationships. We ask, Father, that you move according to your will and your way. And we promise to give you the glory, Father, this day to that person with anxiety and antsiness and, 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 and don't want to be still, losing sleep. Be still and know that he is God. The God of our refuge. Thank you, God, for loaning us our lives and being the host in our lives. So this is what I pray this day. Amen? Amen. Amen. Once again, we thank you for joining us. Um, we thank you for the God of hosts. Amen. We thank you for a loving God. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Thank you. He's the same yesterday champion. He's not he has not left. He's still there. Amen. Yeah. Just be still. Once again, it's the giving church. We give. You're at the house of El Shaddai. This ministry has been a blessing to you. Give. You don't have to be much. I didn't put a price on it. God didn't put a price on it. Whatever the Holy Ghost lays on your heart, give. I don't care if it's two dollars. I don't care if it's a dollar. Give. We give to the poor. We feed the hungry on a regular basis. Holidays are coming up. We're going to have a feeding. We'll let you know. Christmas is coming up. We want to bless some people in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Now, that being said, cash out dollar sign his church. The number two. It's on the it's on the screen. Cash out dollar sign his church. The number two. Once again, feel free to give. We love you. Nothing you can do about it. I'm your guy, Pastor Tad. Feel free to join us every Wednesday, 7 p.m., and every Sunday morning, 10 a.m. Amen. Join us as you receive an encouraging word from the Lord. And on Wednesday, we're going to talk about everything on the wall. Amen. God bless you. Have a lovely, wonderful rest of the work week and a wonderful weekend. We'll see you on Sunday. God bless.